Today on an all new Dr. Phil. She had a secret Facebook page. Poor women's darkest traumas. But she claims a former member ruined her life. Dana was a complete cyber stalker. In reality, I was being harassed. What happens? These ladies have never met. Your stalker's here, Kelly. When they come face to face. Are you scared now? I am so frightened. Why am I your target? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Now, Kelly claims that she's being stalked by a woman she's never met named Dana. Now, she says Dana was a member of her secret Facebook group designed to help women with depression and anxiety. Kelly ran the group of 700 members, which she says was supposed to be a safe place for mental health, but turned into a playground for bullies. Take a look. I decided to create a secret Facebook page for women so you could go on and you could post about your your darkest traumas. I've been a cosmetologist for about 20 years and I've always used the analogy of being an underpaid therapist. You spend generally you know, two hours of your time and they tell you their life. When people would post certain questions or concerns in the group, I took something from all the different therapies that I've been through and I would utilize something from them, whether it be reframing their thought process or talking about like negative self-talk. I really, really like to tell them, if you feel a moment of anxiety, take it as information. What just triggered you? What just happened? Validate that moment and learn from it. In the group, I would spend hours with individuals. It was selfless, but Dana completely distorted every aspect of what I was trying to do. She ruined my life. Well, initially, Kelly thought Dana was going to be a great addition to the group and even made her one of the group's leaders. But on July 11th, Kelly made an announcement. Effective immediately, this page is being shut down. All members will be removed as I have been notified of an impending lawsuit against myself in regards to this page. Well, next thing Kelly knows, she's fired from her job. Then a mysterious package arrived with a bizarre message reading, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So what is going on here? Take a look at what Kelly says about her former Facebook friend. Dana joined the group, and roughly three days after Dana became the administrator, things started going south. In the group, we had a protocol, and it, it was related to suicide posts. In protocol, I would delete the post, I would reach out to the member, I would send all the emergency phone numbers, and then I would reach out to a family member or friend. Dana did not like the protocol because she felt like if someone threatened suicide that it was to be immediately reported to Facebook. When Dana came combated with me, I removed Dana from the page and one of the other admins posed a question as to why Dana was removed from the group. And I referred to Dana as narcissistic. Bad crazy. I said, actually she is the of that crazy. When Dana saw the screenshot of the post, things went wild. A few weeks later, I received a exploding glitter bomb. And the glitter, it was in, in the shape of, of male sex organs. Uh, it went all over my face. And I had just gotten out of the hospital with pulmonary embolisms. So the, the, the fright that it caused, it could, have, it could have been detrimental. I felt confident that Dana absolutely had something to do with it. Then, July 31st, I received an email, 
and the email stated that I was being terminated due to them being embroiled in litigation due to a private Facebook group. Dana basically found out where I worked, posed as an attorney, and ultimately got me terminated from my job. When I realized that Dana was out to get me, I completely felt helpless. I couldn't get my job back. I didn't know what was next. I felt so violated. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad you're here. So how much time has this consumed in your life? It's consumed me way more than I ever anticipated. Um, when, it, when it all started, um, you know, I apologized for what I said, and I thought that would be the end of it. Um, and then it just it continued on. What was it that you apologized for that you said? Um, so I, I started a secret uh, Facebook page. By the way, why was it secret? The, the point of having a secret page is that if someone comes to your page, to your personal Facebook page, they can't search and see that you're on like a, a, a page for women dealing with, with anxiety and depression. It doesn't show up anywhere. It, they, the, the group can't be searched. What was it you said that you apologized for? I said in a group of 11 of us, which was also secret, it was... So this the, wasn't wide? No. We had another secret page to where we could go and decompress and we could talk, you know, about things. So this is a Just, secret page within the secret page? Yeah. Yeah. So this is like, like double secret probation? Yeah, we're like, we're like James Bond. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You said she is from this yeah. town. She truly has yeah. really large issues, mm -hmm. not sure about her dating history. I just know the things she would do and say, and narcissistic times seven fits her. Mm -hmm. She moves a lot because of what she creates wherever she lands. She is the blank of bat crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Oh, Lord, she was absolute combative hot mess, questioned everything that was done and dropped her education that we didn't have on our heads constantly. When she thought things were going south, she started deleting members 36. She's on a level beyond my not getting paid grade. My not getting paid, because it's volunteered. It's volunteered, yeah. yeah, we don't get paid. But this is a page for women that have problems. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you're listing a lot of problems that sh that you said she had. Like she would be someone that would fit the group. She had a big problem with the way we handled. Um, at the time, there were several suicide posts going on, and she had a big problem with the way that that was handled. Right. And that's when she would become very combative. So you don't give advice. You don't do try to do no. therapy or whatever. You're just you're because the it's, support it's group. Here. A support group is just not a leader, it's just you, you have shared experiences, mm -hmm. so you're just there to support one another and encourage them to reach out for help if they need it or mm -hmm. whatever. A member says at 10.55 p.m., the dark cloud keeps consuming me. And you posted, this is disturbing, are you safe? Make a call, please. Mm -hmm. National Suicide Hotline, 1-800-273-8255. Mm -hmm. Then Kelly called a member. Kelly, mm -hmm. 11.05 p.m., did you call someone? Member, yes, and sent a text. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was actually, that's not really in the right premise. Um, the way protocol worked, um, if I, I would go on to admin chat and call protocol, and the dark cloud that keeps consuming me was immediately deleted. I private messaged the member mm -hmm. and said, this is, that was disturbing, make a call, please give them the suicide uh -huh. hotline numbers, and then we follow up, and then we uh -huh. follow up with a family member to, because we don't know where they're at. And her point was you should have reported it to Facebook? Right, but that's not Facebook standards. Right, and on investigation, you did not violate Facebook policy, no. right? No, Okay, you say that you have been attacked by this woman. Oh, absolutely. Have y'all ever met? Uh, just through Facebook. So you never met her in person? No. Okay. Well, she's here. I know. So, coming up, Dana says Kelly started this fight, and now it's time to finish it. Well, they're going to meet for the first time right after the break.
Kelly's Facebook group was like a fan club to her. Kelly needed the group because she needs people to worship her. Kelly was an internet harasser. She lost her job and I don't think that it's my fault. And later, you two. I no, listen, I you need that. to let me finish what I'm saying. I, I'm sorry, but you, I'm not getting my story out there. The floor is yours. Oh, now she's the victim. Again. No, no. no. I don't I'm need not, your no, help. She's the victim. Dana was absolutely a complete cyber stalker. She found my job, she found my address. I felt unsafe in my home. My terror dream started again. It was just awful. I'm mortified that if I find a new job, that she's gonna find out about it and that she's going to contact them. I have no idea of what she's capable of doing. Well, Kelly claims that she's being stalked by a woman that she has really never met. Uh, Dana was a member of Kelly's secret Facebook group that she formed to help with PTSD and depression. Now, Dana says she's not stalking Kelly. She's standing up to Kelly because Dana believes Kelly gives out bad advice. Take a look. Kelly was very much an attention seeker. She did a lot of video posts. Thank you. Thank you. And would thank everyone and say, I know that you need me. Kelly's Facebook group was like a fan club to her. I just really, really want to thank everyone that's back on the page. Kelly needed the group because she needs fans. She needs people to worship her. Kelly would say, here is something that you can use for when you're having a panic attack. Here is the safe color. I would always end with, you know, what is your favorite color? Kelly was the knowledge bank. She was the brain trust of the therapy. I want to kind of help be that light at the, at the end of the tunnel. Kelly would say the safe color over and over again. Red makes me stop, not think about what's happening. I almost started laughing. Oh. Here comes a safe color post. The color coping mechanism is for them to stop feeling and just be present in that safe moment. She used practice the pause. That became part of her jargon. This would be a great moment for you to pause. I love practice the pause. You can get great wisdom from the pause. I love the power of the pause. Did she have several documents where she just cut and paste because they were the same exact things? It angered me that Kelly was playing therapist. It was very dangerous. Kelly has to stop. Well, Dana says she's worried about what Kelly might post about her next, so take a look. You can go out and get another job. You can find new friends, but I only have one name and Kelly drug that name through the mud. There was a girl that was threatening suicide and Kelly wanted to handle it on her own. We'll do you know, whatever we can to, to help talk you off that cliff. I, I can only speak for me, but I will. When I mentioned to, to Kelly, we need to watch out for negligence here, Kelly said, are you just gonna question everything that I have to say? And I was removed from the group. So 30 days later, I read messages of why I was blocked. <laughs> she was an absolute combative hot mess. I contacted an attorney because I was very worried about the damage that it could do to my character. Later, Kelly messaged me nonstop over and over again and trying to call me and saying that I was harassing her when in reality, I was being harassed. I became very frightened of her. My attorney was concerned, so we contacted her employer. Our goal was to show that Kelly was an internet harasser, but her company realized that she was running this Facebook group while she was on sick leave. She lost her job, and I don't think that it's my fault. Well, as I said, these ladies have never met. They've gone back and forth a lot, but they've never met. So Dana, come on out and uh, meet Kelly. Your stalker's here, Kelly. It's nice to yeah, meet you. Dr. Field, how are you? Have a seat. 
Are you scared now? I, I am so frightened of you. Well, I just feel like if, if, like if you hate me so much um, and you watch everything that I do, really, you're just a fan. Well, Kelly apologized and took down the post, so why, why were you still upset? What, that just didn't do it for I've, you? I've not received an apology. And why am I your target? Did, I'm sorry, did I make you lose your job? No, because I don't miss work. I had pulmonary embolisms and a minor heart attack. I was in the hospital three times in a month. If you, ha you know, have to have these groups, because mm -hmm. you're on your third one, right? Yeah, I am. Because my cousin was in your first one, and she committed suicide over the weekend. I heard about that, and I'm, I, I'm really, really sorry about that. You, you had a cousin commit suicide? Yes, I and did. When was this? On Sunday. Oh, well, I'm very sorry for your loss. Is, is that somehow her fault? I, I'm not... I'm I... not saying that it is, but... Kelly's an armchair therapist. Do you have a mole that's one of my friends, or are you going to my private Facebook page? Okay, uh, honey. Let Please me don't you. call me honey. Uh, no, you called me sweetie. Okay, back. And later. She has taken my job from me, and I don't know what's next from her. Who contacted who when you lost oh, your job? Hold on, wait no, a minute. But no, 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 no. Because stop totally talking done. or I'm going to remove you from the stage. From the second you walked out, everything you're saying seems very sarcastic and seems to have a real edge to it. And I'm wondering... Um, <laughs> and I... And, and I, I've just met you, so I don't, right. maybe that's the way you are all the time. I don't know. I, but I'm just wondering, wh wh why is that? And wh why are you here? I'm here because Kelly has put a lot of falsities out there. Mm -hmm. And I need to clear my name because I only have one, even though she tried to drag it through the mud. Um, Actually, you have two. Okay, well, no, hold on, hold on. Listen, no, no, talk to me here. If, because if your name has been besmirched in some way, by all means, let's, this is your opportunity to clean that up. Let's do that right now. I received the screenshots of what she said about me. To these, to this 11 people, this was the secret group within the secret group. Right. Thing that said you were flaky and crazy, bat crazy. Narcissist, and... that I have big issues, that right. I move a lot. Okay, that, that went to, that's what we have here, that went mm -hmm. to 11 people. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, and you want to make clear that that's not true. No, I'm, I'm not the person that's described there. Okay, but you know, you're upset about her post, but at 2 a.m. this morning, hmm. you put up a post about her. Yes, and it I said, did. and I quote, Kelly, you're crazy. Stop stalking me. On public? Right. Yeah. Because I figured out that you've been watching my page. Because the day that you contacted me that you lost your job, you told me, you've been talking about this since Sunday. So how would you know that I've been talking about something since Sunday. What you do you have a mole that's one of my friends or are you going to my private Facebook page? Okay, honey, let Please me tell you. Call me honey. Uh, no, you called me sweetie. You, you called me sweetie, so I, I'm, I'm, okay. Okay, back. Um, we'll go. You, you post things public on your page for things to be seen. I, I do not have a mole on your page. It, it might, like, I've been dealing, like, with real-life health issues, and I just lost my job on July 31st because of you. Um, I've got, like, larger fish to fry than, than you. So, 
You don't think at all that your absences or anything like that from a company that you just started with in May, that That's having those absences? That's not what the termination notice said. And I've been in management before, and I'm I can sure tell you, you that most companies don't email their termination letters. They have a meeting with you. Well, I, that's not what happened. I, I sent the termination letter. Okay. Tell me again why you wrote her job? My attorney wanted to know if she was bullying me using company resources and wanted to know if they had a social media policy. When we come back, Kelly says Dana sent her former employee a fake audio recording of Kelly. Uh, was it fake or was it real? Plus, is Dana's attorney fake or real? Well, we're going to get to the bottom of that when we come back. It's a new page. I'm not going to talk about what happened to the other page because it doesn't matter. It's gone. Closed captioning provided by... I've done probably three or four workbooks on trauma. I've read self-help books, one life coach book. I've never read one of Dr. Phil's books because I've seen every one of his episodes. <laughs> I've gone online and looked at, you know, different snippets of, of what he has to say. You have to look past the behavior and look at the motivation. I often find a lot of the things that I have learned, I, I've learned from Dr. Phil. Dana sent an audio recording to Kelly's former employer. Now, Kelly says it's not her, even though she's never heard it. So let's take a listen to it now. L listen to the recording. Hey, y'all, it's me. It's a new page. The first thing we need to do is try to build the page back up. I'm not going to talk about what happened to the other page because it doesn't matter. It's gone. The thing that we're not going to have on this page anymore is suicidal idealization. So anyways, I'm Kelly. I'm the founding member, and I will talk to you all soon on the page. And I, that, that's me. That's you. But that was, well, that was horrible what I said. Definitely. How, how did you get that recording? Uh, my, inter my attorney contacted Facebook. You can't contact Facebook. With a subpoena, you can. So you're <laughs> saying that your attorney, your attorney subpoenaed Facebook and got that? Yes. I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> like, how much money have you spent on this? That's, that is an all-time record. <laughs> Seriously. Um... But it's you, correct? But what? But because, it's you? That was well, me. Yeah, that was I'm me. saying that's an all time record because this has gone up the appellate ladder as to whether uh, Facebook records are ob obtainable. And your lawyer just sent in a subpoena over there. And, and what did the subpoena ask for? Um, it asked for records from Kelly and her group. Okay. And so, well, no, no, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm, uh, hold on. No, wait a minute. And so, a judge granted you a subpoena. Yes. To get this information. Yes. But there wasn't a lawsuit filed. No, we did not file a lawsuit. Your lawyer just went to the courthouse and said, I want a subpoena to go get a private citizen's records from Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the judge signed that, and they took that mm -hmm. to San Francisco and, and presented it, and somebody went back in another room and came back out with a box full of stuff. It actually went to New York City, and that's where they got the record from. The day that I asked her to remove her post, um, she didn't just simply remove the post. She, for about two hours, harassed me, told me how, what ju how juvenile it was, and that I was harassing her, mm -hmm. um, when all I was doing was, in a kind and civil manner, asking her, please, will you just remove the post? The mm -hmm. post? How did you contact me? Okay, hold on. 
when when we asked for information concerning your attorney, your response was he does not want his firm mentioned or the location. Uh, he said it's for your safety, but also he's not legally involved in this situation. Right, because I did not sign a retainer. It was just services rendered. Ah, come on, Kelly. No. It's not the Kelly show. Listen. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we searched Google and the Bar Association for the attorney's name that you gave us, and he doesn't exist. In Actually, he does. Well, he may exist, but I'm saying he is not a member of the North Carolina Bar, and he does, and you can't even Google his name and find him. He is a third, and he goes by Trey. So he's. He's a member of the North Carolina Bar. He, he is. still has to use his legal name to be part of the bar. You can't just say I'm the third and my name is Trey. How did this really happen? I will say that my attorney did have connections through Facebook. He didn't just get a subpoena from the North Carolina Federal Court and walk into the home offices at Facebook, present it, and through the normal channels, get this statement. Right. Okay, I, I'm going to take a break, and uh, coming up, Kelly received a mysterious message, uh, winter, winter, chicken, dinner. Uh, what does Kelly think that means? We'll be right back. You know, I believe that Coach Mike Bear is a legitimate change agent in people's lives. Uh, he can truly help anyone get from where they are today to where they want to be in every aspect of their lives. And I'm proud to call him a friend and a part of the Dr. Phil team. Now, he also has written a book called Best Self, Be You Only Better. And let me tell you, I consider this book to be a how-to manual to maximize your potential by discovering the best person that you can be. So welcome, Coach Mike Bear. When, when people are gonna make changes in their life, you, you come down a path and you get to a fork in the road, where do you fit in there? Uh, there's two roads we go down. One is the medical, mental illness, kind of the mental health road. And the other road we go down is the coaching, how do I get better, how do I improve my life? How do I be a better version of myself? So one version assumes mental illness. It's a medical model. It assumes there might be medication involved. There might be mental illness involved. And the other d assumes an absence of pathology. It assumes that somebody's not necessarily mentally ill. They just want to maximize who they are and what they're doing. And that's where you focus, right? That's where I focus. And, and I think right now what we have is the irony is having a mental health group when right now it appears you both are creating mental harm. Bullying of any kind mm -hmm. on the internet is damaging. Mm -hmm. It's hurtful. And you both have been hurt. Would y'all agree with that? I don't know how I hurt her feelings, but... No, no, have your feelings been hurt? I'm humiliated by what was written yeah, about me. Yeah, that's what we mean. You've been, you've been, you, you feel attacked. You feel humiliated. You, you feel like people have talked badly about you. Right. So you feel damaged. You feel, feel hurt. I feel. And you feel hurt. You, you feel damaged and attacked, right? Well, yeah. I, so I, it's I not a matter of whether you justify it or not. You both feel that way. If, if I said, okay, Coach Mike, do your thing. If you were going to coach in a situation like this, what's the first thing you do when you get involved with coaching someone like this? Well, I've written down some notes based upon watching, and the first thing we would do is we would remove any of the toxicity in your life. I think if we backstepped a little bit, it would be how can you both be examples to all the children out there, all the young adults, all the people that want to be mental health advocates? How do you get through this problem and get to the other side in a healthier way? Okay, when, so when you say remove all the toxicity, this relationship would be toxic. Would you agree? I, I do agree. And you, you would agree this is a toxic relationship? Absolutely. Okay, so when you say remove the toxicity, you would sever this relationship? I would, I would end this relationship. I would, uh, it seems you both are consumed. I don't, I don't know what, what she'll do next. Well, no, that's what we're talking about here. I, I'm trying I to... I, you can't, I don't, I don't know that you can remove this toxicity. 
but you don't know that you can't. You say you don't know that you can, you don't know that you can't. The only person you control is you. Absolutely. And, and I apologize for what I did. Okay, and what, what Coach Mike is saying is you two need to take each other's name out of your vocabulary. I, you two, I, no, I, listen, I, I you need to that. let me finish what I'm saying. I, I'm sorry, but you, I'm not getting my story out there. I'm not getting, I'm not getting my story out there. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I want to be right and happy. Okay, you say you want to get your story out there. We'll stop this and get your story out. Five minutes of your no, life. No, it's okay. No, get the story out. The floor no, is yours. Just oh, now the, she's the victim. No, again. no. no. I don't I'm need not, your no, help. She's the victim. I don't need your help. Okay. You want your story out? Go. The point is, is that this person has invaded, sent things that blew up at my house. She has taken my job from me, and I don't know what's next from her. Who contacted who when you lost okay. your job? Hold on. Wait no, a minute. But no, no, no. no. Stop totally talking done. or I'm going to remove you from the stage. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, you're, you're not going to be a victim here. You said you haven't got your story out. I'm giving you the floor. Get your story out. You're not going to leave here and say, well, I went in and they didn't let me tell my story. I'm not trying to be. So, I'm well, just the, telling the, here's the story. Here's the story. Here's the floor. Tell your story. I just did. That's it. Is there anything else you need to say? I I said something that I should not have said about her. I apologized, about, apologized numerous times. I think we counted 25 <coughs> times that I apologized. Mm -hmm. She still went after my job. She still said some, something that blew up at my house. And I'm concerned that she will next go after my daughter, that she will next, who will, who will she go after next? You're not even almost qualified to do. All I'm speaking of is things that I've personally experienced. Well, just because you've had brain surgery doesn't mean you can do it. <laughs> My goal was to move forward, and you feel the need to focus on what has happened, and so you opened that can. Let's eat the whole thing. Okay. Um, you, you say you're triggered, mm -hmm. um, and you say you're in these support groups, mm -hmm. and your goal is to have a safe place for women to go and, and talk about this, mm -hmm. and you say that you uh, don't do therapy. I don't. But yet in your tape, you say, I'm really like an underpaid therapist. Because we I work as a, a I understand exactly what it yeah. was. You said I spend all this time as a hairdresser listening to people tell their stories. I'm really like an underpaid therapist and an overpaid bartender. And uh, you you say I don't dole out therapy, but then I hear you doing therapy. I hear you talking to people about identifying their triggers, reframing things, identifying negative self-talk, all things which, in my opinion, you're not even almost qualified to do. All, all I'm speaking of is things that I've personally experienced. Well, just because you've had brain surgery doesn't mean you can do it. You've been in therapy. That doesn't mean you can go do therapy. I'm not doing it. But you are. No, I'm not. Well, then why are you talking to people about reframing their reality? I didn't. I didn't say reframe re reality. Well, I, I said, could. I said get out of your uh, dealing with coping mechanisms to get out of your internal mind and go to your external. <laughs> That's not giving advice. It's people talking about coping. It's peer support. That's all it is. And what I'm telling you is uh, you just may be putting too much pressure on yourself and taking too much on I because so. what you're doing sounds very much to me like you're giving advice and giving therapy and telling people to practice the pause and the power of the pause. And I learned that, that off of Pinterest. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It actually, it was a, a snippet of a picture that said, practice the pause. And I thought yeah. it was pretty, pretty dynamic. Yeah. They could have read it themselves.
Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to really be careful about doing of that. Of course. And if I could say, by not being properly trained in that, mm -hmm. your reaction to Dana created this consequence. By running a group around people who have mental health issues, mm -hmm. you yourself need to have the right mentorship to probably be doing that. Right, but I did not do that in the group. I did that in a group of 11 people. And I took responsibility and said, you know what, I, I absolutely should not have said that. I was out of line. I, I, I reacted emotionally. And I didn't practice the pause. OK. So we're going to take a break. How can Kelly and Dana move on here? What would Coach Mike do here if he was going to say, all right, let's not live in the past. Let's see what we can do so both of these women can have some peace about what is going to happen. You say you don't know if she's going to attack this or attack that. What can we do to move forward here? We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... I don't know that they're ready for it or want it, but, I, you know, Coach, Mike is the founder and director of, of CAST Centers here in Los Angeles, which is a really... Uh, top-notch, uh, high-level treatment center. They do a lot of different things. It's not just a rehab center. It's a, it works in all different areas. And you guys have life coaches that work with people around the world. And you're willing to get a life coach, to a different life coach, to work with each of these women if they want to say, you know, put yourself in the shop. Let's do some assessment let's see if you get a life plan and 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 help them get moving in the right direction and you're prepared to provide that to both of them right I'm prepared to provide it as long as you both have motivation he's offering that to both of you if you would like to have it if you don't that's okay but absolutely uh, would you like to do that sure I'd be open to it what I hope is hoping that you can be examples for so many young people out there that get caught up in this. Remember, there's a whole world out here with real people in it. It's not all about likes and pictures and dislikes. Um, I can tell you, if you're getting cyberbullied, collect the evidence, keep it, because there are cyber crimes divisions and people will help you with those kind of things. As I mentioned earlier, Coach Mike just released a new book called Best Self, Be You Only Better. I actually wrote the foreword to it because I found this book to be a standout in a very crowded category. Best Self can be a powerful roadmap for change if you commit to it. And you can get your copy anywhere books are sold right now. It is right at the top of the bestsellers list everywhere. But all of you are going home with your own copy today. All right. I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Coach Mike, and a special thanks to Cast Centers as well. You'll find a link to them on our website. For more information on today's show, log on to drphil.com. We'll see you next time. Coach, thank you.